Welcome back to Algebra 2, Chapter 2, Section 6 on Special Functions. This is Part 2 of the video. If you remember in Part 1, we did piecewise functions, where your graph was broken into several different sections, you know, each with its own part of the domain. Then we did the greatest integer function, the step function, where you had widths to work with, 0 to 1, 1 to 2, 2 to 3, or sometimes those were changed based on what value was in front of x. Now we're ready to talk about our last one, which is called the absolute value function. The absolute value of a number, remember, is the distance it is away from 0. So what we're looking at here is you're always going to get a positive value out of the absolute value portion. So the graph, instead of being a line, is a V-shaped graph. So let's consider graphing y equals the absolute value of x. We need to pick some numbers for x. With an absolute value, I like to know where it's going to turn. So what will make the interior of the absolute value equal to 0? Well, in this case, it's pretty obvious. x equals 0. So 0 is my middle value. And then I pick two numbers smaller and two numbers larger. So 0, negative 1, negative 2, and then 0, 1, 2. Okay. Whatever is going to make this equal 0 is what I like to put in the middle to make life easier for myself. So if x is negative 2, the absolute value of negative 2 is 2. If x is negative 1, the absolute value is 1. At 0, the absolute value is 0. At 1, the absolute value is 1. And at 2, the absolute value is 2. So now I have some points I can work with. Negative 2, 2. Negative 1, 1. 0, 0. 1, 1. And 2, 2. Now I've got my points. I just need to connect them. And it is indeed a V-shaped graph. Okay. When you have absolute value, if you don't get a V of some kind, you have done something wrong. You need to go back and find where your turning point is. Because that's probably where your problem is. You don't have the right turning point. Now let's consider one that's a little bit trickier. We have the absolute value of 2x minus 4. What's going to make the interior of this absolute value equal 0? Well, clearly, x equals 2 is going to make that equal to 0. 2 times 2 is 4, minus 4 is 0. So 2 is going to be my middle value. Now that I have 2, I need two numbers smaller, so I'm going to pick 1 and 0. And I need two numbers bigger, so I'm going to pick 3 and 4. Now we're ready to just plug in. x equals 0. 2 times 0 is 0. Minus 4 is negative 4. The absolute value of that is 4. 2 times 1 is 2. Minus 4 is negative 2. The absolute value of that is 2. 2, we said earlier, 2 times 2 is 4, minus 4 is 0. 3, we get 2 times 3 is 6, minus 4 is 2. The absolute value of that is 2. And it shouldn't surprise too many of you to see that 4 gives us 4. So now again, we've got our points we can plot. 0, 4, 1, 2, 2, 0.
three one. And four four. And again, I get my trusty pen. Draw nice straight lines that go through the points perfectly. And I get my V-shaped graph. Now, am I going to take off on yours if mine are this bad too, you know? No, as long as you have a V-shape to it, it's okay. What's not okay is to have a U-shape. And what's not okay with absolute value is to have a straight line. It has to have a V in it somewhere. It has to bend. Find that bending point. Find that turning point. That vertex, if you will. And then you'll be okay. So we've gone through our special functions. We've done our absolute value here. And in part one of the video, we did the piecewise functions and we did the step functions. I understand that's a lot to take in. You can do this. I have complete confidence in my students. You can handle this task. You're just going to have to put some patience in, put some time in, put some effort in, and you'll get there. If you had questions along the way, hopefully you wrote those down. And as always, we'll see you in class.